Hi everyone, um, I hope you're good and well and stuff, and as you can see from the title of the video, um, it's freaking exam results today, tomorrow, and tomorrow? Tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow. Yeah, and I know you're freaking out. Trust me, I've been there. I know you're freaking out. This is mostly going to the A2s out there, or year 13s if you want to, um, out there, kind of talking about uni and what to do next and clearing and all of that jazz. Um, first advice is I know that even when you see the title of this video you're actually just gonna like I know the Zonto heart like you're actually just gonna like be doggy and inside like you're gonna want to have a palpitation just looking at exam results but I would just say just calm down and I'm gonna go through a few tips and share some things with you from what I've been through that can help you and yeah just to ease things and it make it not as scary because it's really not like when you look back on it you'll be like <sighs> but it, it is one of the most stressful days of well of my life so far anyway um but yeah don't worry i'm gonna share some stuff with you and i think it will help you a lot and it'll make you prepared for what's to come so yeah lay out um i've just written down a few things that i think will help you guys first thing this is one thing that I, li I didn't do student finance until literally, because obviously, as you guys know, I went for clearing. I didn't do student finance until Aug end of August. Yeah, end of August, the 25th-ish of August, that's when I did student finance. So yeah, you can imagine how late my money came. So my first advice to you guys is please, even if you haven't done your student finance, by the time you are watching this video right now, after you've finished watching it, go and do your student finance. Literally, it takes about four to six weeks. It does take, in my opinion, it takes a shorter time than they say to process all your information and actually accept, th for them to send the acceptance letter that you ha are gonna get student finance. But um, just to be careful, honestly, like just do it as soon as possible. Do not leave it late like me. Like I did it in August. And I got it in end of November. So literally, my ass was doing Gary and peanut and water for breakfast, lunch and dinner for like three months. And then I was living like a king for a month. Like my account was just bipolar. And it, it, in a way, I was trying to make myself optimistic. Like, yeah, I'm going to be really rich by the end of the term. But you can't live like a freaking prisoner of war and then be living like a king like it, it's not good for you it's not good physically and mentally so i would just say do do, do your student finance asap um okay next thing is um for people who get the results and they wanted and get into the university they wanted and everything and all that jazz um i would say if you haven't gone to see your accommodation and i know some black people and yeah yeah i'm shouting at them but some of you guys are lazy like like seriously like go and see your accommodation people like just don't leave it late because at the end of the day you need to know what kind of environment you're living in and, and plus if you don't like it you've got a chance to change it like people I know didn't go and see their accommodation they ended up staying in like a flat of accommodation sharing a bathroom with 16 people like a big room with no heating and ugh, nasty so just sort it out and go and see it um i would also say know your subject i feel so serious in this video i'm so sorry guys i would also say know your subject literally i cannot stress this enough a lot of people choose a subject because obviously they they know the background of it but i'll emphasize that in a minute they know the background of their subject and they're interested in it and they've done it at a level oh i've heard that last one before but honestly your subject of what you know it to be and your subject at degree level is completely different like a lot of people knew what they were getting thought they knew sorry what they were getting into with law because they did it at a level no no like if you're a law student like me and you want to do law degree level and hopefully that's what you're going to be doing come the 16th of august then seriously just don't think that a level prepare a level prepares you for degree like it doesn't it doesn't prepare you even if you've done the subject like law De like law degree is just a jump away from it and people who do a level at law, um, law a level tend to be kind of 
over confident that they know what they're getting themselves into and honestly it's nothing it's nothing like A-levels nothing like college um, so yeah that's one thing I've got to say but um, if, even if you haven't done an A-level I would say know your subject know how they teach your subject know how many professors or lecturers teach your such subject with the ratio of students that's so important you can have a lecture hall with 200, 300, 400 students and one lecturer and that's it like in in cov we have coventry we have lectures but then we have seminars so we also have like 15 students 10 students to the ratio of one teacher so it's so much more like kind of cozy because you get a lot more information so know how your subject is taught and check yourself and be like can i be dealing with that and if not look at another university this is going more up this point here is going to more the as's who are going to be sending out personal statements in october so yeah um sorry if you're a us this is just going to be so to you but um yeah so also what else did i say also check go to your uni open days please a as's i beg you don't just apply go to your uni open days like the um the prospectus is a liar the devil and the prospectuses, both of them, they're liars together. Trust me, go to your uni because it can be completely different to what you're seeing on the pages. And plus, like, even if even if you are like a city girl and you go to a city university, it may not be for you. Like some people went to Nottingham and it wasn't for them because Nottingham is such a big place and it might not compare to a small city like that's in London, for example. Um, also all you people from cities like London and Manchester who want, who like hustle and bustle, careful when you apply to unis like East Anglia. I'm not saying don't apply to them, I'm just saying open your eyes and go to the uni because unis like East Anglia are like kind of very country wise and very picturesque but they're not hustle and bustle, city, noise, cars, it's none of that so you need to kind of align what you want from a city with your uni sometimes and yeah the next thing i have to say is something i say so much and i know a lot of other people say it and i i know that as soon as it leaves my mouth you're going to be like oh here here she goes but i'm going to say it bad results are not the end and if you've never heard it then you're hearing it now bad results bad results are not the end like trust me it's not the end and there's always something you can try and do to make your dream come true. <laughs> I feel like I'm about to burst into song. And I've got hiccups now. Um, but yeah, basically, even if you don't get the results that you, d that you, even if you, if, you, if you, even if you don't get the results that you wanted to get, you can always go into clearing. And I know clearing sounds so awful. And in a way, it is. But clearing is a magical place where you can find unis that you may never have got into had you applied to them earlier in, on in the year. Let me give you an example. So say you were applying to unis normal time, October, November, and you never thought to apply to, I don't know, I don't know Newcastle, just because you didn't think of it. But then when you got your unexpected results, Newcastle may offer you a place and even though that's not where you originally planned to go to, it's somewhere where you never would have thought of going to had you not come into clearing. Like clearing can open amazing doors for you. Like places like amazing unis like Southampton and Oxford and Cambridge and Nottingham and York and all these places still have places in clearing and obviously people who get unexpected results can still get into those amazing unis. So don't think that bad results you can't get into uni you can even still get into an amazing uni and you can still get into uni full stop like when you do get into uni and i'm not saying if all of my viewers will get into uni in jesus name when you get into uni it's like it doesn't matter if it's great up on the on the times or guardian uni table or not like trust me you can still be successful and you can still get your two one or your first class it's actually all dependent on you and not the uni at all basically i'm quite sick of um this bad and good um uni culture 
where there's like, oh, I want to go there because it's a good uni. Or you tell Nigerian uncles and aunties, I'm going here and they've never heard of it because it's not Oxford and Cambridge. Even if you're not going to a uni that's not in the top 10 or isn't in a Russell group, that doesn't mean you still can't get a 2-1 and get a first and get an amazing job. So it's all dependent on how hardworking you are and not how many pass rates the uni has depending on people you don't even know probably never meet you know what i mean tell you that oh yeah that's a bad uni blah, blah, blah. as long as you go into uni trust me that is a blessing alone a lot of people would kill to be where you are so one don't take it for granted when you get into uni and two don't let the position of your uni affect what you think you can do basically sorry this is going to be a long video but it's a lot of information that's why i'm talking really fast um also, lastly, and this really does hit home for me, this is something I wish I saw a video like this when I was, how old was I? <laughs> 17, 18, because um, it's what I needed. Um, this is, if you don't hear anything else from this video, just hear this. If you currently are applying for a subject that you do not like, or you are not good at, and you think you have no hope of getting a 2-1 or a 1st, do not do that subject. Now, I may get a lot of parents that are gonna comment on this video shouting at me, but I'm sorry, I don't care. If you are doing a subject you do not like, you are not passionate for, or you are not good at, um, I definitely think that people doing degrees they don't like end up doing very badly because you lose the passion, you actually lose will to live. You're waking up at what, eight? Eight in the morning on your own, you're getting dressed in your own, making food in your own, buying stuff for yourself. No one's there to push you to read your books. No one's gonna push you to go to the library. No one's gonna push you to do your work, to do your coursework, to revise for exam. No one's gonna do that. And if you don't have the passion for your subject, it's really hard to imagine how you're gonna do well like it's just really difficult for me and most people to imagine how you do well so even if your parents are pushing you to do a subject you don't like I beg of you either try and come to a compromise because that I think that's quite a sensible thing to do or just completely out, out disobey I'm sorry like I respect parents but sometimes your destiny doesn't really in line with, with what your parents' destiny is for you. And, and hopefully, and I pray, like, God willing, for all of you who are going through a situation like that, that God will actually help you and bring you through that. But for now, while times are tough, if you can't come to a compromise, you have to really follow your gut and your heart and, like, what inside is telling you to do. And I pray that you all, like, find that place degree that will help you um um that's basically it in a really big nutshell. Um, I'm sorry if the video is long. It looks like it's going to be about 60 minutes. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, I beg you. If you have any more questions, put it below and either inbox me. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. So you can message me on there. Um, all my details are below and Instagram and all that jazz. So yeah, thanks.